Hi everyone, Arizu Gaming here, and I just wanted to share my thoughts for you about the various geysers and vents that you can find in Oxygen Not Included, uh, spaced out. I'm going to put together a little tier list. I've seen some tier lists online, and for the most part I agree with them, but I, I thought it'd be fun to make this video anyways. So uh, yeah, the criteria I'm rating these on is how useful they are to a colony that is developing. Like, if you find this geyser randomly, when you're setting up, when you're digging around the map in sort of the early to mid game, how much it's actually going to help you and how much you should prioritize getting it online compared to the others. Um, so with that in mind, we'll start with uh, the cool steam vent. I'm sure everyone's familiar with this one. It um, produces water in the form of steam that's actually 110 degrees Celsius. And on average, it produces about 1.5 kilograms per second it's enough to run one and a half electrolyzers off you're going to get about 13 dupes worth of oxygen out of this so it's quite good but um dealing with the temperature is definitely something that's a little bit challenging in that you either have to condense the steam so that it forms water and then you electrolyze it or you have to raise the temperature up past 125 degrees and then run it through a steam turbine to get it out. And they're both viable options, but they both take a little bit of cunning. You can just let these off gas into the atmosphere to start um, where they spawn. And it'll heat up the environment for a while, but you will get hot water out of it you can use. But eventually it is going to stifle. The steam isn't going to condense fast enough. And the geyser is just going to overpressurize. It only takes five kilograms per tile of steam pressure to overpressurize. So yeah, it can be a bit tricky to handle, but definitely a good one to find to start. Uh, so I put in A tier, um, a very good source of water early on. Um, a little bit tricky to handle into the mid game, but you can definitely do it. Uh, then we've got the steam vent. So the difference is with the steam vent, the water comes out a lot hotter at 500 degrees C. Um, and the yield is a lot lower. It's about 750 grams per second. It's about half as much water with a lot more heat. So you're not going to feed as many dupes oxygen off of this. But the primary purpose of the steam vent, the hot steam vent compared to the cool steam vent, is just the actual heat and the power you can extract from that with steam turbines. And you have to be quite clever with how you set up your steam turbines so that you're using all the heat. What I like to do is I like to have it so that only a little bit of steam, like about 0.8 kilograms per second, is going through the two intakes rather than all five at once. Um, and that lets you get a lot of the heat energy out of the 500 degrees steam. But that can be really complicated to set up early on. And the end yield is a lot of power, admittedly, but not as much water. And by the time you can actually get this online and running, the, the power isn't going to be as relevant because you're probably going to have natural gas, solar power, that sort of thing online. So I would put it in B tier. It it can be nice to find, but you're not gonna you're not gonna start your colony off of it. The water geyser. Uh, this is actually one of my favorite ones. So I'm gonna put this in S tier. <laughs> because the volume of water is insane. It's three kilograms per second, and it's 95 degrees C. So you can literally shove that straight in an electrolyzer. There's no, there's no steam condensing required. So you're gonna get like 20, 26, 27 dupes worth of oxygen out of this on average. Can be higher, can be lower. Um, and yeah. It's just water, there's no phase changes, it's pretty handy. Obviously you're not gonna get any power out of it like you might get out of a steam vent. You're gonna get minimal power out of a cool steam vent anyways. And provided you don't just like try and feed your plants with 95 degrees water, and you do have a way of cooling stuff down, it could be really good. And also just electrolyzing the water on its own will delete a lot of the heat because the heat capacity of the oxygen and the hydrogen is so low. Electrolyzing it will remove a lot of the heat anyways. So if you can find one of these to start with, especially on a cold map like Rhyme, <laughs> like my current playthrough, uh, it can really actually be the catalyst for getting your colony off the ground at the very start, if you manage it right. So I really like water geysers. 
Uh, polluted water vent is also really good. I'd also put this in S tier. Um, the yield is the same at three kilograms a second. It does come with food poisoning germs. Um, so it can be troublesome if you're trying to turn it into clean water to use for clean things. But you don't, you don't really need to worry about that. Because if you're sieving this and electrolyzing it, yes, the oxygen will contain food poisoning germs. But food poisoning germs don't do anything in the air. So it's really not an issue. And if anything, it's a positive because it keeps other germs out of the air. But you don't really want to electrolyze this. It actually comes out at room temperature, 30 degrees C. So it's absolutely perfect for feeding to a lot of plants like thimble reeds, like arbor trees, bog buckets, that sort of thing. And you'll get so much of it. You can basically run a large farm off of this alone and the plants don't care about the germs. So again, this is one of those guises where if you find it, it, it will really set the direction that you start your colony in, and it could be really good. And then next we have the cool slush geyser. I'm also going to put this in S tier <laughs> uh, for a slightly different reason. The yield is less. It's about it's half that of the polluted water vent, 1.5 kilograms a second, but it comes out at minus 10 degrees. So you can use this as pretty effective coolant early on because it's a liquid. It's below freezing. It has a pretty good specific heat capacity uh, and you can just pipe it wherever you want to cool and then the end result is you'll have your water, uh, polluted water at room temperature again and then you can either electrolyze it or just feed it to plants or sieve it or whatever and it doesn't have germs in it either so that can be handy if you really don't need germs in the water so yeah that's really good as well that's particularly useful on maps like oasis where the whole map starts off super hot and you desperately need to find some kind of source of cooling. Highly recommend those. Uh, saltwater geysers. Let me... Hold on, let me bring up my list. I'm trying to remember why I actually gave this. Yeah, okay. So I gave this an A. And that is because you can boil it into regular water pretty easily. So the volume again is 3 kilograms per second and it comes out at 95 degrees C. You could desalinate it if you want, but what I tend to do is I just heat it up a little bit with something else like a metal refinery or a metal volcano or something, and then that will boil it and the salt will just precipitate out. The salt will just come out and you can just collect it and rock crush it, do whatever you want with it. And then you'll just have regular steam that you can easily condense again, and then suddenly you've got the water. So it's kind of like the water guys, but just with a, a small extra step. And you also get the salt that you can use for your food or for um, a rust um, deoxidizer. Um, so it's not quite as good, but it's still very good. And it's very easy to heat this up, depending on what you can find nearby. If you can find a volcano, like a metal volcano, that's great. If you can just, alternatively, you can just set up metal refineries in there and it will often be enough, provided that you keep them busy. The throughput is really high as well. It's as high as these regular water geysers and the polluted water vents. So yeah, very, very good option. And then we move on to uh, some non-water sources. This is basically my ranking of all the water sources at the moment. Uh, minor volcanoes and regular volcanoes. So I'm going to put these in the same tier. What these are giving you is they're giving you magma, which is very, very hot. And that's kind of obvious in retrospect. Um, the minor volcano gives you about 550 uh, grams per second on average, and the magma volcano gives you twice as much in 1.1 kilograms per second. And the magma comes out at 1,727 degrees, roughly, as a liquid. The magma is quite viscous, <laughs> and it's obviously very hot, so you're going to have some difficulties dealing with it and it, it you can you can condense it into igneous rock and then you can either robo mine it out or you can have it form little blobs of igneous rock instead of tiles if you're very clever with it but the end result is you're going to get a lot of hot igneous rock you can drain the heat from that and get a lot of power with steam turbines um, and it also gives you renewable igneous rock so you're not really going to use these at the very start for obvious reasons unless you desperately need to heat something up but late, uh, later on, it gives you a renewable source of rock, which could be really handy if you're feeding hatches, which are a great option for food, or if you, if you just want to get coal production for making diamonds, 
it's kind of necessary for renewable diamond production, feeding igneous rock to stone hatches, that sort of thing. Um, so if you can tame these, you get a lot of power out, you get a lot of rock out. It's quite good. Um, although the one thing is, these volcanoes erupt very infrequently. Um, so whatever your system is, it needs to be able to cope with distributing the heat of the magma out over a long period of time and then dealing with a sudden injection of magma. And I built some volcano tamers on my previous playthroughs, which you can also see on my channel, but um, yeah. It's quite difficult, but it can be quite rewarding. Uh, and I would put them both here because sometimes you just don't need the amount of heat that a regular volcano gives you. Sometimes a minor volcano is all you need. Like if you're trying to set up like a petroleum boiler, you don't necessarily need all of the magma for a, from a regular volcano. A minor volcano will do the trick. And it depends what flow rate you want, but especially starting off, it can make it easier to handle just having less magma. So even though the volcano gives you more, I would put them in the same tier overall. And another thing to bear in mind is if you are feeding the rock to stone hatches, um, they eat a lot of rock. A regular volcano isn't going to produce enough rock to feed a large amount of stone hatches. So you need quite a lot of volcanoes to sustain a really big stone hatch population. So sometimes you do want the extra throughput the volcano gives you. But yeah, I, I rate them about the same, to be honest. Uh, and then we got the carbon dioxide geyser. <laughs> you probably figured out these carbon dioxide geysers aren't very good, but I'll go through them anyways. So throughput of this one is 150 grams per second. Um, it's not a lot. Carbon dioxide isn't super useful. You can feed it to slicksters and get oil, but the throughput is so little, why would you bother? And the temperature is really low, which is good. Um, but in case you're trying to use it for coolant, carbon dioxide has a very small specific heat capacity. So it's not actually got a lot of ability to cool things. It will just warm up right away without sucking much heat from whatever you're trying to cool. And sometimes it can be enough. Like I set up a base where we started with a carbon dioxide geyser um, and we used that just to cool down a thermo aqua tuna and that was enough. Um, but <laughs> you, you, you're going to struggle to find a real use for this. It's too cold for slicksters as well. So if you're trying to set up a slickster ranch, it's not very good for that. But it does technically provide some cooling capacity, so it's not completely useless. Uh, but generally, I wouldn't, I wouldn't bother, <laughs> unless, unless there's a real use case jumping out at you at the time. You don't need to bother doing anything with this. You can just cover it up. Um, and then we have the hot carbon dioxide vent. So this um, is about 105 grams per second, and it comes out at 500 degrees C. So it's a lot hotter, but again, there's not actually a lot of heat energy because carbon dioxide retains so little heat. Um, what I, so there's no point hooking up a steam turbine to this because it's just not going to get any power draw from it. There's not enough energy in the carbon dioxide. And the throughput is so low as well. But it is pretty good for setting up slickster and molten slickster ranches. Like a single ranch will thrive off of a carbon dioxide vent and it'll keep it at the right temperature. It's quite easy to set up, so there is a use case for these, but you're probably not going to get to that until mid-game, but I've, I've done that a couple of times on my playthroughs. So, again, not completely useless. Um, the other use case for these two is when you're in the spaced out mode and you're doing a lot of uh, initial rocket travel with carbon dioxide rockets, but they're not even that useful for that because it's very easy to produce carbon dioxide if you have access to lumber and trees. And guess what lets you grow trees? Yeah, polluted water sources. So it's often more efficient just to burn lumber to make carbon dioxide when you want it than trying to sustain rocket travel off of low output, high temperature, low temperature carbon dioxide sources. But it is something you can do in a pinch if you don't have access to any lumber anywhere and you desperately need carbon dioxide and you're you're not producing enough of it otherwise. So they're definitely not useless. I haven't got useless tier on here, but they're very situational as you probably figured out. So hydrogen beds, these are quite good. Um, it's obviously free power and the hydrogen is quite hot. Uh, so I put that in B tier. Again, it gives you about 105 grams per second on average um, at 500 degrees C. And out of all the gases, hydrogen retains quite a, 
quite a lot of heat capacity. It actually has a decent amount of energy in it. And what I usually do is I set these up to heat a metal plate and then have the metal plate heat some steam. And then that goes through a steam turbine. It doesn't generate a huge amount of power, but it's not completely insignificant. And you can do that and get the hydrogen down to a temperature where you can just pump it with like a normal gas pump that's steel or maybe even gold, depending on how much how many steam turbines you have up there. Um, so it's relatively easy to tame. It does give you free power. Um, it's about enough to run one hydrogen generator off, maybe a little bit more. It's probably going to give you about a kilowatt of power in total, maybe a little bit more if you hook a steam turbine up to it as well. Um, so it is pretty good. And if, you, if, if for some reason you're electrolyzing uh, water and you don't have enough hydrogen, it gives you a little more hydrogen. But the throughput of hydrogen from just electrolyzing these geysers will be more than you'll ever get from a hydrogen vent. So I can't reasonably put these above the this cool steam vent or the water geyser or anything because you're going to get more hydrogen from these than you will from this. And the heat isn't really that much to sing home about. I put it at about the same level as the steam vent. It's a lot easier to tame early on, but the ultimate output is a lot less. You'll get a lot more power out of a steam vent and some excess water, which you can then electrolyze and turn into more hydrogen. But early game is pretty good. Whereas late game, the steam, the regular steam vent is better, in my opinion. And then we've got the natural gas vent, which is which is really good. Uh, I'm going to put this in A tier. It's, it's, it's basically the same, except um, it produces 105 grams per second of natural gas instead of hydrogen. The natural gas is at 150 degrees C instead of 500. So you don't get as much heat from this, but it's much easier to set up early on because it's very easy to dissipate that amount of heat such that you can pump it with a gold pump or a, a regular pump um, and it's not going to cause you any problems. You can basically just set up a natural gas power station with this super early on as one of the first things to do. And then if you can automate that, you don't have to worry about power because you'll have enough power to do the early game stuff with this. And I just find it I just find it better overall than a hydrogen vent. When you're running this through the natural gas plants, you also get polluted water out mostly as a waste product. And you can use that polluted water to feed like a tree or a thimble reed or something as well, which is really handy in the early game. Um, so it's kind of close, but I prefer finding these in general. I mean, it's not much natural gas output compared to like a petroleum, um, like oil refineries and like sour gas boilers and stuff, obviously, but it it's, it's enough to get you started early on. I would rather find a natural gas vent than a hydrogen vent just because it's easier to hook up. The waste products are more useful initially. Um, so yeah, I quite like them. And then we got chlorine gas vents. <laughs> These things are not very good, especially not in spaced out. So the chlorine comes out at um, 60 degrees C, which is somewhat hot, but Chlorine has very little heat capacity, so it's nothing to actually worry about. Like a wheeze wart or two will, will deal with that, probably. Um, and again, it's 105 grams per second of output. Uh, the main purpose of chlorine is that it, um, well, there's two purposes. One, it kills germs as a gas. It's really good at killing germs. But in spaced out, you know what else is really good at killing germs? Radiation. And <laughs> it's a lot easier to control radiation than chlorine gas. It's very fiddly to pump areas full of chlorine gas and then like move water into like liquid reservoirs so you can cover them with chlorine gas. You can just irradiate them instead and it's quite easy to get radiation where you want it. You can find wheeze warts, you can put stuff in space, you can you can even ranch shine bugs if you want. Shine bugs reduce a decent amount of radiation. Um, all the cases where I'm trying to get rid of germs like if I'm trying to clean up an infectious polluted oxygen vent or something like that, I'll just find a radiation producer and put it there instead to get rid of the germs. It's much more efficient. You can use it to kill germs, but I just don't think it's very good at that compared to radiation spaced out. You, you might be able to put it a little bit higher in regular oxygen not included without radiation, um, where there's less competition. But the other use is making bleach stone. You'd feed this to squeaky puffs and they could turn it into bleach stone and then you can use that bleach stone for hand sanitizers and 
Mostly for growing lettuce. That's the only way you're going to get re renewable bleach stone is from feeding a chlorine gas vent to squeaky puffs. But the issue with that is the throughput is so low, you're barely going to have enough to feed a single ranch of squeaky puffs off a chlorine vent. Like 105 grams a second isn't very much. In fact, I'm not sure that's even enough for a single squeaky puffed. I think the squeaky puffs eat like 70 grams a second or something. I, I can't remember off the top of my head. This isn't a video about puffs. All I remember is I tried it and the amount of chlorine produced wasn't enough to keep even a small and usual ranch going. So it's not very good for that either, unless you have like six chlorine gas vents or something on your planet. But why would you bother? <laughs> you... That that is it's good for a challenge run, but I don't think I'd ever use a chlorine vent. I'd I'd ever prioritize using it. I I usually never even bother digging them up. Um, then there's the oxygen vents. So oxygen vents aren't great. The throughput isn't very high, and you're much better off just electrolyzing water to get your oxygen. But they do have uses. It's 105 grams per second, just like the others on average. It's about enough for a single deep. And the hot polluted oxygen vent, it comes out polluted, so you'd put deodorizers there, and they turn into regular oxygen, and you turn sand into clay. So it's a, it's, a, it's a way of getting clay. But guess what else produces polluted oxygen? Off-gassing polluted water. What you can actually do is you can just set up a very wide pit full of polluted water, and that will off-gas and produce a lot more polluted oxygen than a geyser will on average. If you just have even a reasonably sized body of polluted water spread out over a wide area. So, the throughput isn't that great. There's a, there's a lot of heat, but oxygen doesn't really have a lot of heat capacity. So, it's more of a nuisance than anything else. You can cool it somewhat easily, but it's not really worth going for. It can be useful in a pinch, and it is oxygen, so I'm very hesitant to put it in D tier. I think you, you'd be more likely to want to try and hook this up than these three, but it's very close, from being honest. The infectious polluted oxygen vent I think is a bit more useful because it comes out at 60 degrees, it's a lot easier to cool. The problem is it does come out with slime lung, but in, in Spaced Out it's quite easy to deal with that because all you need to do is put a wheeze wart next to it and deodorizers. The wheeze wart will cool it down to a reasonable enough temperature and it will get rid of the germs. The radiation is enough to really just kill the germs at the source so they never even enter enter the game. You won't see them show up on the germ map mode with the Wii's War. And it's it's quite a lot easier to tame than the hot oxygen police event. In fact, I'm kind of, I'm, I'm actually going to put the hot one in D tier at the top of D tier. Because it's so little oxygen and it's a lot of effort to deal with cooling it down. You're better off just trying to get the oxygen via other means. Like it's an absolute last resort and I can't think of a situation where I'd actually go for it. Whereas the infectious polluted oxygen vent, getting rid of the germs is easier, the temperature is a lot more manageable, the throughput is the same. I think it's probably the better choice by, by clear margin. So then we've got the sulfur geyser. This is introduced and spaced out, and this is really nice. Um, the setup for taming it is kind of specific, but if you could do it, it is going to give you, it is eventually going to give you free food and free water and free dirt. But the, the, the chain is quite challenging. First of all, it comes out at, let's see. It comes out at 165 degrees C. Um, and the throughput is 1.5 kilograms per second. So it's quite a lot. Um, so you, you have to cool this. But the issue with sulfur is, once it solidifies, the thermal conductivity of sulfur is actually very low. So if you try and deal with this like a metal volcano where you've got like the sulfur going around on conveyor loops, it's going to take forever to actually transfer its heat into whatever gas or liquid you've got in there. It's just going to sit on the conveyor belt for ages and unless you've got a really big setup, it's not going to dissipate enough heat to really handle the throughput. So what you want to do is you want to keep the sulfur liquid and actually just pipe it through uh, pipes at low throughput like below a kilogram per second in liquid pipes. And then it will cool down as liquid sulfur, which is a much higher thermal conductivity. And you'll be able to cool it a lot more quickly down to a reasonable temperature, so like 30 degrees or something. And then have it exit a vent and have it turn into lumps of sulfur and then put it on your conveyors. 
So that's the first step. And then to actually make it something useful, you have to feed it to Sweetles and Grub Grubs. The Sweetles will turn the sulfur into sucrose, and then the Grub Grubs will turn the sucrose into mud and uh, yeah, they'll turn it into mud. And then you can either boil that or put it in a sludge press to turn it into dirt and water. So the geyser lets you host a reasonable population of sweetles and grub grubs for food and for tending your other plants. And the end result is dirt, which is always useful for a lot of things and in limited supply. And water, which you sustain your dupes with. And it's a decent amount of water I, um, I did talk about this at length in another video in terms of the exact ratio of sulfur um, turning into water, but it's reasonably high. So it is going to be enough to feed quite a few, dup uh, a few dupes off of. Not as much as the steam vent, obviously, but more than definitely more than the uh, oxygen vents. So yeah, they're quite good. They're a bit fiddly to set up, but it can be worth it if you're going to have sweet and grub grub branches. And it can be worth steering your colony that way, depending on the circumstance. Like if you're on the flipped asteroid, this is quite an appealing option, if you can get in there through all the magma. <laughs> um, so then we have the leaky oil fissure. This is a bit of a weird one. Uh, I'm going to put this in C tier again. So oil is nice. Um, it comes out about 125 grams per second on average, and it's kind of a constant leak. It's not like the other guys is where it's like an, an active eruption and then it goes cold for a while. It's just fairly constant and it comes out at 327 degrees C. So it is very hot. It's kind of too hot to pump with like a steel pump. So you'll need to cool it with something, uh, but it is constant oil. You don't have to put water into it and oil is useful for things. <laughs> You obviously can turn it into petroleum. Oil itself is pretty good for liquid locks and coolants and stuff. And you can turn the petroleum into plastic. I don't need to explain how good oil is, I don't think, but there's lots of things you can do with it. it it's a liquid that stays hot, um, that stays liquid at higher temperatures than water, so it has lots of applications in that respect. But you're usually better off just finding some oil wells and pumping water into them. You can pump hot water into an oil well. That's a good way of getting rid of it because the oil's going to come out of there hot anyways. The oil isn't going to come out as hot as it comes out of a leaky oil fissure. So if I had an oil well on this list, it would go above the leaky oil fissure, but it's certainly not completely useless. And it can be worth digging one up if you find it early on. And say you're on like a Rhine map and you need to heat up the map a little bit, it gives you early oil and it gives you some heat to work with. So can be worth going for early in certain scenarios, but generally I prefer an oil well. And then finally, we've got all the metal volcanoes. So metal volcanoes are really, really good. Um, refined metal is kind of challenging to get early on. You need to build a metal refinery to get it 100% out of ores, and you don't want to waste your metal ores because they are finite. If you burn through all of them, you really are going to run into problems. So you want to set up a metal refinery to get it, and then it takes dupe labor, it takes a lot of power, you have to deal with that heat in some way. Metal volcanoes provide an alternative to that, in that if you can if you can dissipate the heat from the volcano output into some steam, and then run that through some steam turbines, you can quite easily just get the, volca the, the metal for free. Like just keep dumping water on it until it turns into steam. You can use it to like boil salt water into steam, get the salt, Condenser steam again. They're quite good. Um, and there is, I do have an order of preference for these. So I'm, I'm going to skip the order here. My favorite one is gold. And um, the reason for this is gold as a metal has a very low specific heat capacity compared to the other metals. So even though it comes out the hottest at 2627 degrees C, it actually has the lowest. Uh, thermal energy by quite a margin. It's the easiest to cool. You can basically cool it with one self uh, cooling steam turbine if you set it up correctly in the loop. And gold is a pretty good metal. It has high overheat temperature, it gives a decor. Um, and it's by far the easiest one to set up early on because it requires so little cooling. You can literally just 
You can literally just set this up near a water geyser and it's going to be absolutely fine. You'll get some steam, but it'll be manageable. You might not even evaporate all the water, depending on what temperature the water's coming out of things at. Um, I really like it. Iron Volcano is really good as well. You need them, you need iron for steel, so being able to make more steel is really good. Um, I'm going to put this in A tier because it's obviously good to set up early on, but you, you're you always going to find this on the Tundra Asteroid. So finding one on your initial planet isn't required by any means to have a really good long-term colony with lots of steel production because you're always going to find iron volcanoes in space on the Tundra Asteroid once you get like a somewhat decent space program going. It's still handy to have early on, but it's not it's not mandatory. If I was playing like the if I was playing the regular oxygen not included classic, I'd probably put this at S tier. Uh, I'll put this at A tier for now. It's nice to have, you don't necessarily need it. And it's a lot of heat compared to the gold volcano. So you do need more steam turbines to deal with it. It's a bit harder to tame early on if you're trying to do it without steam turbines. Um, but it's still pretty good to have. And then, I mean, they're all they're all A tier realistically, <laughs> um, but I do prefer the Iron Volcano. Aluminium as a volcano or aluminium, as the game calls it, is also pretty good. Um, in that, aluminium has very good thermal properties. It has the highest thermal conductivity of any metal you can get early on. Um, if your map doesn't have an aluminium volcano, you're probably going to end up building more things out of thermium in the very late game when you could have just made them out of aluminium so it is nice to have on a seed um, these things do produce the most heat out of any volcano um, you're going to find early on because aluminium has such a high heat capacity even though it comes out at the lowest temperature you're going to need the most steam turbines to deal with this but again it has unique properties you can't really find in the other metal volcanoes and then I would put the uh, the copper volcano next. It's just pretty bog standard metal. Um, no real significant properties compared to iron. Um, other than the fact you can't use it to make steel. But it's still pretty good. Refined metal is refined metal. It has lots of uses. Um, you probably want to find one of these over a regular volcano. And it's going to be more impactful in the long run than something like a hydrogen vent or... Um, Possibly a sulfur geyser or a steam vent, but it's more useful to find early on, for sure. And then we have the cobalt volcano, which is very very similar as well. Um, so that fits here, and it's kind of awkward. I don't think I'd change any of these uh, ratings, though. I think cobalt's probably the least useful metal overall, considering its thermal properties, the temperature it comes out at. All of these metal volcanoes have the same output these these five in that it's 300 grams per second on average and it comes out very rarely in large amounts but the way you tame them all is pretty much the same you can just set up a conveyor belt with a loader in the steam room and because the metal is such high thermal conductivity you just loop it around the room in conveyors until it gets cool enough and then it can come out once the steam's at the right temperature they're all pretty easy to manage and then the last two, uh, I'm actually going to put these in their own special category, the Niobium Volcano and the Tungsten Volcano. And spaced out, uh, you only find these on other planets outside your starting planets. You've, like, um, So you're never going to start with one of these. And obviously Tungsten has really good thermal properties, and then eventually you, you combine it with Niobium to get Thermium, and that's going to give you the best thermal properties for your... Um, your buildings, the highest overheat temperature, etc. Um, so you, you usually need these for late game build projects, but you're never going to find them on your starting asteroid. You're always guaranteed to find them. So I'm, I'm just putting them in not applicable. They're obviously really good and kind of mandatory to do late game things, but they're just a constant presence in your game. So I don't think it really makes sense tiering them. They're not going to make the difference at the start of your run. And that's what this list is really about. So yeah, that, that pretty much summarizes my thoughts on the geysers. I really like the <laughs> the high throughput water geysers. I find them super useful. Saltwater geyser is also really good. It just requires a little bit more setup. Gold volcano is definitely my favorite metal volcano just because it's so much easier to set up because the heat is so much less. 
and then cool slash geyser i really like it for cooling i've realized i've actually missed off the cool salt slash geyser from this list um i would put that in a tier <laughs> i'm sorry i don't have a little image for this i don't know uh i don't know why i missed it off the list but um yeah i put it in a tier it's gonna have the same sort of overall cooling effect with the brine as the cool slash geyser but you're gonna have to desalinate it afterwards probably just with a regular desalinator um it's gonna take a lot more energy to boil than some salt water that's already hot the throughput is very similar it's it's 1.5 kilograms a second again <laughs> like here it is <laughs> here's the cool sl salt slash geyser um yeah, you have to desalinate it, but then you've got regular water and you've got some salt. Um, I prefer the regular cool slush geyser. And then on this list as well, uh, A tier, we have the natural gas vent. Uh, really good early game power, very easy to set up, waste products are useful. Highly recommend. Other metal volcanoes are always really good to find. Don't uncover them right away, but once you can start pouring some water on them, uh, and, or eventually set up a steam room. It's re a really good way of just getting renewable, refined metals, and then you can just go to town with whatever you want on that. And then we've got the regular volcanoes, lots of heat, steam vent, lots of heat. Um, byproducts are useful, but you're mostly looking for the heat from these. Hydrogen is pretty useful. It's similar to natural gas vent, except a little harder to set up efficiently. Um, less useful byproducts in that there is none apart from a very small amount of heat in the generators and then the sulfur geyser is water and dirt but it's a bit harder to set up than all the others it does require you to do some ranching it's quite a complicated chain so quite specific in its uses and then we have the low tier uh, geysers you don't really want to be running your colony of oxygen vents but one thing is these oxygen vents are very good if you've got a single dupe on a planet because an electrolyzer, you, you're not going to need to set up a water geyser with an electrolyzer for one dupe. This will produce enough oxygen for one dupe. And you can just have some wheeze warts and uh, deodorizers there. And then you don't have to worry about oxygen for your one dupe on a planet. So that's another good use case for this one in particular. The extra cooling the hot polluted oxygen vent requires isn't as good. The leaky oil fissure is a, a source of oil, but it's quite hot to handle to start with. And you're usually better off uh, putting your getting your oil from oil wells if you can find them. But if you don't have any, it's it's a it's 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 not too bad. You'll want to get this hooked up eventually. And then the carbon dioxide vents and the chlorine vent, very specific use cases, usually not worth bothering with. But there, you'll occasionally find a use for the carbon dioxide vent. But usually you're better off just feeding a tree polluted water, and burning the lumber to get carbon dioxide. But uh, yeah, those are my thoughts on the geysers in Oxygen Not Included Spaced Out. Let me know if you have any uh, comments or uh, <laughs> if you have any um, uh, of what your opinion is on these uh, geysers. I, I usually like to pick uh, the maps I start my runs on based on like what geysers are available, interesting combinations of things. My current run, we're on a Rhyme map where we've got 16 magma volcanoes. That's so going to make things interesting. But uh, yeah, thanks for listening and I'll uh, see you soon. Thanks very much. Bye for now.